Well, hello, my fabulous friends. I hope you're doing well. Quick, pick a number between one and seven. Don't even think about it. What's the first number that pops in your head between one and seven? I'm not even going to allow you to think about it. I'm not even going to allow you to pause. What number showed up? The very first number that you thought of between one and seven. This, my friends, is the chakra that is out of balance. And I'm going to help you find how to balance that chakra. So if you chose number one, it's your root chakra. If you chose number two, it's your sacral chakra. If you chose number three, it's your solar plexus chakra. If you chose number four, it's your heart chakra. If you chose number five, it's your throat chakra. If you chose number six, it's your third eye chakra. And if you chose number seven, it's your crown chakra. So without further ado, I'll make sure I put timestamps down below. I'm going to be using the Shaman's Dream Oracle, the Oracle of the Seven Energies, and the Energy and Spirit Oracle. And I'm going to give you some advice how you can balance this chakra. And yes, my friends, chakras are real. They are energy centers that, um, be that can become clogged or unbalanced and can create... Actual physical maladies can create mental maladies or can create some kind of soulful malady because it's your body, mind, and, and soul um, that your chakras are connected to. And you have a, a, a silver line that goes way deep into the earth and goes way up in past your uh, post office to the universe, your your um, a violet, a violet flame uh, you have many, many chakras. You have more than seven, but the seven are the ones that affect the body the most. And um, when we uh, have one out of balance, we can balance it back in and return harmony into our lives. Now, the when that silver cord that goes out up to uh, the universe, to God, to whatever you believe in, and then down deep into the earth that keep us earthbound, when that breaks, that's actually when when you leave your physical body. And so people who have near-death experiences, uh, they don't really die. They, um, You don't die until your silver cord is broken. And when your silver cord is broken, there's no coming back at all because it, you've detached from your, your the physical. So anyways, let's get on with the reading. All right. So if you chose number one, Please don't overthink it. Whatever number popped in, if you chose number one, let's figure out how we can get that chakra. That's your root chakra. Your root chakra is actually at your ankles and it keeps you grounded to the earth. And that's a good thing. <laughs> All right. Root chakra. How do we re repair our root chakra? Drifter. Experience life as it comes. So are you stuck? That would be a really, um, that would indicate root chakra problems. Experiencing life as it comes, allowing, um, uh, you know, if you're stuck and you, and you can't move, so you have to allow yourself to move. And on the other hand, drifter, are you not uh, attached to the earth? Are you living too much in your, in your head? Uh, are you not grounded uh when you get this drifter experience life as it comes yes to be able to be flexible to move like flow with water but also if you're too flowy and you aren't grounded that also can create problems and there's a great special on called earthing and it talks about being grounded to the earth uh we get electrical impulses from the earth and a lot of times um, wearing uh, rubber-soled shoes uh, will keep us from uh, grounding onto the earth. You really should try and go barefoot at some point. Um, if let's say, for example, though where I am, it's you know minus thirty outside and snow on the ground and ice on the ground. I certainly don't want to talk, walk barefoot, but I do have a cement part in my basement I can go stand on for a few moments or I can buy a grounding mat and I've, as I've mentioned before I have a grounding mat at the tarot table uh, so that I remain grounded and I don't get too spacey 
So that's actually very good advice for if your root chakra is out of balance. You may need, it's either stuck to the ground too much and you're not, you're, you're going to break instead of bend and flow or you're too flighty. So let's see which one is it. And it can be both. It can be both. Divine matrix. Divine matrix. I think we have um, our answer here. If you chose number one, I think you're, you're, you're not grounded to the earth. Um, interesting, 14 and 44, so we have four, and what's four? Four is, uh, something that's solid. Um, interesting, the fourth card is the emperor, and he's sitting on a cement throne. Uh, four is stability. Um, I think, I think here, I think we're, we're a little bit too flighty here. Not flighty meaning that, um, uh, you're just not grounded as much as you should be. Grounded meaning in living in reality. Maybe you're living too much in your head. You've become unbalanced. You're living in the um, upper upper chakras instead of the lower chakras. Let's see what what else do we have here. Uh, and I'll give you some remedies here in a minute. Archangel Raziel, wisdom, inspiration, Akashic records. And look at, she's very balanced. She's got her feet in the water. She's got bare feet on, touching the water. Plus she's got her heart um, also pointing upwards. She's doing some things like reading. Um, you can see, look at all the books she's read. So that will keep you in your head a lot. That will keep you in um, imagination rather than reality. Um, so I think what we, what we need to do here, I think we got, if you chose number one, um, you may be a little bit too, um, not wanting to face reality in some respect. Uh, so how do you get there? You need to wear brown clothes. You need to do some grounding. Get your feet touching the ground. If if anything, if you wear rubber-soled slippers in the house, at least go barefoot in the house. Um, try if you have house plants. Even if you put your hand in the soil of the house plants or somehow touch the leaf of the house plant, um, uh, eat brown foods. Um, you know, whether that's stew, meat that has been browned, a brown um, gravy, perhaps eat things that grow on the ground. And, you know, that could be like a, a watermelon, a wa anything that has vines that grow on the ground, um, watermelon, actually grapes. You know, one thing that we, we put our grapes up on vines and we, and we make them grow up. If you leave a grape to grow the way it wants, it actually crawls on the ground. A grape, cantaloupe, melon, uh, fish are under the sea, so they're underground. Uh, those would be good foods to eat if you are dealing with root chakra imbalance. Try and watch nature shows. Um, you know, see yourself, tell your brain that you're in nature. Um, if you, if you're lucky enough to go live by a beach, go walk along the, the sand, somehow get your feet on the ground barefoot. Um, like I said, if like, we just have a small patch of cement around the furnace and the water heater that's never been developed. There's nothing on it. There's no carpet lino. It's pure cement that touches the earth directly. Uh, so we can go stand on that as well. So, yeah. So, um, and if you're stuck, those remedies will also help you um, move your your chakra so you you bend instead of break. It'll, it'll really um, activate that chakra. Also, uh, wearing red, uh, eating red foods, uh, strawberries, um, that kind of thing. Red meat, if you're a meat eater, red meat. And then when you cook it, it turns, it, it turns brown. So a steak, uh, that was, steak would be absolutely perfect uh, because a cow eats the, 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 um, the grasses from the ground and, uh, and then provide you with that. Uh, milk, milk is hidden. It's in the mammary glands. Uh, even though it's white, it's it's still it's, it's a considered a hidden food uh, or underground or from the ground. Um, so yeah, so there's number. If you chose number one, it's your root chakra that's out of balance. You, only you will know if you are uh, living in in your head or you're so stuck that you break instead of bend. 
either way, the remedies are the same. All right. All right. So that's group number one. That's chakra number one. All right. So if you chose the number two, it is your sacral chakra that is out of balance. Your sacral chakra sits at your bottom. Um, it has a lot to do with creativity. It's orange in color. Uh, so if you're feeling like you can't, you aren't creative lately, or maybe you're over creative, maybe you're over activated it. If you're having any kind of reproductive problems and that, it doesn't mean that you, when you're in reproductive years. So for example, if you're going through a menopause, um, or, uh, let's say you're a male and you're, and you're having difficulties down there, even prostate would be, um, considered, uh, sh uh sacral chakra, any kind of you know, bottom problems with any kind of movements. Let's just put it that way. Keep the, keeping the, the channel clear. Um, anything to do with that bottom half of your body, any kind of problems whatsoever, cramping, bloating. Um, I think you're getting the picture <laughs> extra. Um, if you go to the, the toilet quite, quite a bit often, um, if you're having, uh, even if you're having, um, SEX problems, um, in that regard, whether too much or too little, uh, that would be a, a second chakra imbalance. So let's see, what are the cards suggesting? How do we fix this? How do we fix this? Drifter. That is so funny because, uh, the number one, uh, the root chakra got that as well. So if you have a number two, if you chose number two and you have sacral, you might have both root and sacral. The problem might be from the root to the sacral. That's really, really interesting that you got that, uh, drifter experience life as it comes. Um, I uh, maybe like, for example, if you're having sacral, maybe you're hanging on to to things. Um, and so you're, you're constipated, right? Or, um, uh, maybe, you know, uh, you're pissed off about something. So you're having urinary problems. Maybe you're having difficulties with, um, any kind of SEX kind of thing. It's just, um, you're, maybe you're being too cold about being open with your partner. Um, maybe your, you know, your partner is like, Hey, honey. And you're like, oh, I got a headache again. Um, that kind of thing. Oh, look at that. The clock agrees with me. It's time to open that up a little bit and experience life as it comes. Um, interesting wording. <laughs> oh, I might have to edit that out. So anyways, let's see what other, what's going on here. So this is being more open to life and not and not hanging on. And I think, you know, if you're having problems in that in that number area, in that area, you might know exactly what I'm talking about. Opening to discovery. So there we go. Yeah, that is you're clamping on to things. You're not willing to let go of things. Uh, you're just becoming angry about things like I'm, I'm pissed off and and. Um, I don't give an SHIT and like, if you're using that kind of language, um, this is your set, this is your sacral chakra. That's out of balance. Absolutely out of balance. It, it, this is so interesting. Drifter experience life as it comes opening to discovery. Um, interesting. This almost looks like an opening. I just realized that. And there, this is a key. There's a key here. Um, and so maybe allowing more things in or allowing things to let go, to let go of things, to let go of things and to be open to discovery. Maybe if you're having problems with um, SEX, I'm spelling it because I, I'm worried about the um, algorithm. Um, maybe you need to experiment. Maybe you need to uh, be open uh, to other suggestions or uh, something new, right? Um, I mean, everything can become boring after a while. I mean, everything you think about, even your favorite dessert. I mean, if you have too much of it, it becomes boring and you become full and you, you, it repulses you at some point. Right. So, uh, yeah, I think we have to let go here. If number two is your, is yours. And we have art, Archangel Haniel, 
joy, blessings, intuition. And look at that. This is uh, orange as well. There might be a little bit of a uh, solar plexus here with you, a little bit of overlay. But this is just to become interesting. These are both very dark. And then we become happy. And we go from 14 to 15. So by joy, blessings, intuition. Um, look at we got some stars on here, stars on here. Opening to discovery. Maybe you just need to... Um, try something new. Um, let go. Drift. Let that. Let that drift away. Let your problems drift away. Whatever you're clenching onto, whatever you're clenching onto that's closing you up, um, it's time to let it go. Joy, blessings, intuition. And that's how you let it go. You become more joyful about things. Um, you count your blessings. Um, and also because orange is creativity. So maybe you want to create something. And if you say, well, I don't know, I, don't, I can't create anything. Well, cooking is creating. Go try a new recipe. I mean, everybody has to cook. Everybody has to eat. It doesn't have to be, you know, over the top. Just try a new recipe. Um, maybe you always made, you know, spaghetti and sauce one way. Try it another way. Maybe throw mushrooms in it or something, for, for example. Um, but try something new. Be be creative. This is interesting because there's a little chickadee do up there, um, and and uh, and so that's creativity and that and what comes from your sacral reproductive area, little baby chicks, right? Um, other things that you might want to try in in creativity is journaling, writing, um, watch something that's completely different that you've never seen before. If you always watch nature shows, watch watch a show about engineering. If you always watch engineering shows, watch a show about nature. Watch a romantic comedy if you never have, and you always watch crime shows. Watch something different. Be become creative. Um, uh, open up your intuition. Uh, because your intuition is very creative and it's opening to discovery. Uh, so that's the, that's the um, the orange chakra. So you want to eat things that are orange. Well, that's oranges. That's oranges um, or anything that's orange. Carrots, orange, orange peppers. Um, I... Um, I mean, you could count eggs in that, but eggs are more yellow, but they can be because they are a creative process and, and our own mammal, our own ovaries are in that area. Uh, so they can be balancing for this sh sacral chakra. I know some people don't like to think of things like this, but <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Um, you know, so anything that, re that is orange, um, you know, maybe you make some kind of carrot soup or, or or carrot juice or orange juice or orange smoothie or it doesn't have to be the actual orange. But eating that orange will, will really start to activate that chakra, balance it a little bit and also just being open to things and being creative and, you know, trying something new. If you always walk out your front door and go left uh, try going right and and walk a block or so that way and and see what new what's new there. Um, if you always go to the same gym, try go to a different gym. Try to really mix it up when you want to break open that sacral chakra because I find that sacral chakra can be quite tight and closed up and it can take a lot to get it going. But this card here, and it's even got the orange and bursting orange into the solar plexus chakra, joy, blessings, intuition. So that's what you need to do if you chose number two to get that, to get that um, second chakra balanced. All right, so if you chose a number three, you chose your solar plexus chakra. <laughs> That's not funny. I... <laughs> I hope you can understand mumbling. Um, okay, so your solar plexus chakra is your direct connection to the sun. That's why it's called the solar plexus chakra. That's why our belly button is. And it's so interesting when we're born, um, that's our connection to our mother that's that's cut. And the moment that's cut is the moment your soul enters your body. I know that's controversial, but this is the way I've been taught. 
Uh, the sun is actually the holder of all our souls. That's why the sun is called the soul, solar. Um, the soul, S-O-U-L-S-O-L. -S -S the sun in Latin is soul. So when you see any kind of word solarium, that's sun. Um, but that's why our soul, S-O-U-L, comes from the soul, S-O-L. And that's where our solar plexus is. And that's where our connection, direct connection to our soul, our oversoul, is actually through our belly button. Um, that's our solar plexus. Uh, that's where our, you have two brains, two intuitions. You have your gut intuition. My gut says, my, what does your gut say? That's your, that's your second brain in your, and that's your brain directly from your soul, from your soul family, from your soul guide, from your soul, um, that is in the sun. And we return to the sun. When our, our silver cord is broken, we return to the sun. Um, and so our solar, our solar plexus connection, um, is our intuition and um, when that is blocked, we're blocked from intuition. Um, our stomach is tight. Our stomach is tight. We have indigestion. We can't eat. We can't take of the earth because we have our our soul is blocked. Um, what else is our stomach? That's where you know when you get really upset and you throw up. Um, it's because it's it's rejecting of the earth. Um, and food is of the earth, right? So anyways, let's see our solar plexus, our third chakra, our third chakra, which is ruled by the sun, of course. And so it's color yellow. And let's see if you chose number three, your solar plexus is out of, of uh, whack. And let's see what the cards are suggesting to you to repair and get your solar plexus going again. Deep, quiet, meditation, and stillness. Wow, that's a number 11. Wow, deep, quiet, meditation, and stillness. Maybe you're doing too much. Um, isn't that interesting? There's actually like a person here, like like a like your ghost, like your your soul, your higher, your higher um self trying to trying to talk to you here. Um Coming in through your crown chakra, even though this is the solar plexus. Um, keep deep, quiet meditation and stillness. Uh, we carry a lot of stress in our stomach. So I can see how this is saying it's it just whoo, chill, chill pill. You need to slow down. You need to absolutely slow down, especially if the number 11 means something to you. Um, you know, 11 o'clock, um, are you born in November? Is your birthday on the 11th? Um, is your house number 11? Is there an 11 in your phone number? Um, I, what else? Our high priestess is, uh, two, but it always looks like a number 11. Um, justice is the justice card. All right, let's see. Okay, now they're ready. Oh, this one's popping out. Oh, waking the lion. And look at that is actually, that is the sun. That is the sun, 19, the sun. And the sun is the solar plexus. So you've got to, uh, uh, okay, now, now I know it's blocked. Your solar ple plexus is blocked. And the only way to open it up is to be deep, deep, quiet, meditation and stillness. You need to rest. If you chose number three, you definitely need to rest because your your solar plexus actually has um, a lot of information for you and wants to help you and wants to be your intuition. But it's blocked. It's blocked from from coming out, awakening the lion. So as soon as you rest Get rid of your stress. Your solar plexus can come online again for you, provide you with the intuition, provide you with energy that you need, provide you with ideas, be your best friend with your second brain, uh, have your higher self um, help you. Wow. 
I can't believe you got actually the sun card, number 19. That's the sun. The Leo. What other? Freedom, moving on, letting go. Look at that. Number three, you're all blocked up. And then poof, let go. F moving on, letting go. Let go of that stress. And the only way you're going to let go of it is you do that meditation and stillness. That's the only way. And then you can come roaring back. If you think that you're just going to, you know, um, come roaring into the situation without doing that first, you're wrong. This is all blocked by this card. But as soon as you do that, do your meditation, do your stillness, kapow, you are actually going to create more energy. You're actually going to create more time for yourself. Um, you're actually going to create uh, more intuition, more guidance. Your best friend is going to come online. And look at that. Peace. Out of the cage of stress. Look at that. <sighs> I'm getting like you really need to do some deep breaths here. And breathe through your stomach. Get that solar plexus active by breathing through your stomach. That can also be awakening the lion. When you, when you make your stomach move to breathe and you're not just breathing out of your lungs. When you do those deep, deep breaths. When you use your diaphragm. To get that solar plexus activated. That's really the only way you can move that solar plexus. I mean, you can move your root chakra by, by uh, walking. You can move your throat chakra by uh, waving your arms and, and, and talking. But your solar plexus, the only way you can is with your stomach muscles, with your diaphragm. And uh, so get that going to get that to get that going. And that's through deep, quiet meditation and stillness. Do some breath work. Wake this up. And it's actually, you're going to feel a lot better. It's actually going to uh, free any kind of stomach issues that you have in that area. Liver area problems are also in that area. Um, so if you're finding you're burping a lot, that's your, you know, your, your gallbladder and, and, and whatnot. Um, if you're always tight in that area, that would all be solar plexus activating the physical. Um, so you need to do that. Now, other ways that you can activate your solar plexus is by wearing yellow clothes, by wearing gold, by eating yellow foods. Um, that could be bananas, um, uh, any kind of yellow vegetable like yellow zucchini. Um, chicken can be considered yellow. Um, I'm just trying to think what else is, well, lemon, lemon water, that's, that's yellow. Um, anything, any kind of food that's, that's yellow, wearing yellow and wearing gold. And the gold does not be real gold. Even if you have, um, uh, uh, gold plated jewelry or, or, um, other jewelry that, um, is just accessories, go ahead and it's gold, go ahead and wear it or anything that has a sun motif on it. So if you have a necklace that's of the sun or if you have a coffee cup with a sun on it, um, go gaze at sunrises and sunsets. Um, go watch those. Um, I'm trying to think what else would be considered yellow. Yeah, like anything banana. Um, uh, like I said, chicken for meat is considered a yellow food. A uh, corn, corn of course, is yellow. Um, but yeah, wearing yellow, and that's invoking the sun, especially in the daytime. Be very active in the daytime. Go sit in the sun if you can, uh, with, and exposing your stomach. So don't sit in the sun with your laptop on or your iPad in front of your stomach. Go sit in the sun and uh, just relax and breathe with your arms open with your um, solar plexus facing the sun. So those are ways that you can reactivate, rebalance, um, get that solar plexus going to um, get your energy going, to get your intuition going, uh, to help with any kind of stomach or liver ailments. All right. And I guess this would be a good point to say I'm not a doctor. Um, you know, if you're having some really severe problems, please go see your doctor. Uh, this is for entertainment purposes only. All right. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm just going to move that up a little bit. All right. So if you, the number four came to mind while you were choosing your number, you are at the right spot. This is the heart chakra. The heart chakra. This is your soul chakra. Even though I said your solar plexus, um, your heart, the, your, your soul comes in through your solar plexus, but it sits in your heart. Your soul comes in through your solar plexus and balances, um, comes into your body through your solar plexus, but actually sits in your heart to balance your mind, body, and soul. Um, I know, I'm, I'm probably confusing you. I hope I'm not, but your your soul. So I want you to think, even if um, this, this has nothing to do with Christianity, but if you've ever seen a picture with Jesus and he has a, his heart is glowing and it almost looks like it's in his hand, and that's telling you that's where your soul, that's the seat of your soul. So your soul comes in through your belly button, through your solar plexus, and then it's, it, it climbs up into your heart. And that's where the seat of your soul is. So I hope that makes some sense. Um, your soul, where your solar plexus comes in, uh, it, where your soul comes in through your solar plexus is um, also where your, um, your gut feeling, your, your second brain sits. But your, but your soul actually sits in your heart. So your soul, your heart chakra is your soul chakra. And that's where we meet our soulmates right? That's how we're connected with our soul family. Those are the people that make our us heart happy. Um, and so if you chose number four, um, you may be feeling very lonely. Um, you may actually have heart palpitations. Um, you may be actually having real heart problems. I'm not going to say balancing your chakra is going to help, but it's not going to hurt, right? And it's free to do. So let's see, what are what is the advice if you chose number four? What will be your advice if you chose number four? Empty well, time to replenish. What did I tell you? It's That's that lonely feeling. That's what's happened is... Um, That's why you feel lonely because it's, it's the well is empty. Um, uh, you've burnt yourself out basically. Um, let me see. Let's get, let's get something's telling me to draw another card on there as well. Ma Magician sword confidence in your magic. So I want you to have confidence that you can, um, definitely you can repair this confidence in your magic. Let's see what else is going on here in the heart chakra. Maybe, maybe you've, your long-term partner has recently left you. Maybe you haven't found a partner. And so it feels like you're missing out on something here with that empty well. Um, maybe you've just had a big blow up with all your friends. I know um, recently the um, there was a big division between the magic juice People lost friends and family over it. Oh, up from the depths, releasing difficulty. You have a 16 and a 6. Okay, if you chose number 4, you're really going through it right now. Um, but this is good news. There's Go towards the sun. Go towards your soul. Go towards your higher self. You know, even though you chose number 4, I want you to... Um, Look at that. I reverse them. I sorry, I do that often. If you if you chose number four, I want you to also watch number three. Go back and watch number three. Because it'll explain a lot about your soul. Um, and this is your soul coming in and then and then going up in sitting up in your heart, releasing difficulty. Releasing difficulty up from the depths. Let's see. What advice? You just have to have confidence that things will change if you chose number four. A deep breath. And there we are in the heart chakra. And the, what's around the heart? The lungs. The lungs. Um, and also the heart chakra, can it's green, but it also can be pink. And it also can be turquoise at times. Um, interesting. This is, I said, this is where your soul sits near and here's the soul 
Here's your soul sitting there knowing everything is going to be okay up from the depths. Um, so you may be feeling very lonely right now with your heart chakra. You may be feeling unloved. You may be feeling that nobody understands you. You may be feeling like you're all alone here on earth. Um, uh, you may actually have just lost someone either by, um, by them passing on or they've left you. And, um, so you feel like your heart, your heart, you have a broken heart. And I'm almost getting here too, like this sword coming up. Um, but you have to have confidence that you'll come, you, this too shall pass. A deep breath. Now the heart chakra sits at the bottom of the ribs to the, just under your armpits. Your arms are actually part of your throat chakra because we communicate with our hands, right? Our hands are communicating. Yes, we can hug, but that's communicating our love to somebody else, right? Our heart chakra sits in our rib cage, which is our deep breath. And it's, and it's uh, surrounded by our lungs. And just by breathing, we can, we can reduce our heart rate. And also we can increase our heart rate by breathing. If we start hyperventilating, our heart starts, our heart starts responding to that as well. Um, uh, just by breathing, we can change our heart rate, our heart rate uh, up or down. So this is telling us, take a deep breath. You might need to be doing some, some heart work, but you have to have confidence. Number four, you have to have confidence that in your magic, in that you can change this. Even if you're saying, well, no, they left me. But you know what? It's how you releasing difficulty coming up from the depths. You can do that. You can do that. You can time to replenish and deep breath. Maybe you're trying to push this grief too fast. So now your heart's shut down. Maybe you're trying to um, push a love too fast and you've pushed them away. Um, maybe, you know... I know a lot of families, a lot of friends lost um, a lot of friendships and connections over the magic juice in the last couple of years or voting uh, what political party you are. There's a lot of reasons why we, we are showing up today with an empty well. It doesn't have to be a personal one-on-one, -on -one, um, but it's damaged your heart chakra in some respects. Not that you can. I mean, you can't really damage them. They just become blocked or slow and you want them to be balanced so time to replenish with a deep breath now if you can afford a spa go to a spa go get some self-care go get some massages if you can't afford a spa get some human touch now it doesn't have to be sexual in any way whatsoever um, you know, if you, if you have a niece or nephew, hold their hand, play ring around the rosy, holding their hand, give them big hugs. Um, you know, somebody that you really, really love that, you know, is not going to reject you. Um, you know, uh, like I said, niece and nephew, maybe a favorite cousin that you've grown up with. Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, a best friend that you've had since grade two that, you know, no matter what you say or do, they won't leave you and start to feel your well full of all, all these people that are still in your life instead of the ones that have left your life. Take a deep breath. <gasps> oh, yeah, my cousin, they still love me. I still have them. Take a deep breath. Oh, I still have grandma. Take a deep breath. Oh, I still have, my heart is still full. I want you to take enough deep breaths and releasing the difficulty. Every time you exhale, inhale somebody who loves you a lot. And then before you know it, your cup runneth over. Your cup runneth over. Also do, um, uh, that's one remedy for the heart chakra. Another one is, is to wear a lot of pink. If you actually have a heart problem, wear a lot of green. Green is healing. You can wear green and pink, but if you're really missing love, wear a nice soft pink, like a nice soft rose pink color. Um, also pink foods like, a, um, you know, a light cranberry. Um, it's not quite red, but it's not, not a lighter pink, but you can maybe dilute it so that it's a pink, a nice cranberry juice. Um, uh, you know, like a ham, ham is pink. Um, you know, uh, 
I'm trying to think what else. Not a lot of foods are pink per se. Um, but a lot of reds you can dilute until they're pink. But the best way is is to actually go out and get some human touch. Even if you have to go get a massage. That's another human being touching you, healing your heart chakra. Um, it doesn't have to be love. It doesn't have to be sexual. It's just the human touch. Um, uh, another thing is maybe do something, you know, whatever your your religious background is. And even if you, you know, let's say you were brought up cr Christian, but you haven't been to church and doesn't, it, it, you know what, go find a church. Go find a church and just just for once and, and go sing and just enjoy the company of other people. Um, if you're Jewish and haven't been to synagogue in year, go go find a, a synagogue to go to, um, or a mosque, or whatever it is, a, a Buddhist temple, whatever it is. Uh, find something that um, it relates to you in some respect. And uh, and if nothing does, then just go to your local one. Just a lot of them are very open and welcoming to visitors. Uh, uh, during their services, just go and sing with people and be with people who are happy to be there and singing. And, um, you'll feel a lot of love. You'll feel a lot of love. Um, uh, and, and just, it, you, you don't worry, you will be coming up from the depths. You will, you'll release some difficulties and, uh, get back up, up to where you belong. All right. Um, I think that's about it for number four. Please take care. Please take care. And if you have any, any kind of physical heart problems whatsoever, don't hesitate to call your doctor. All right. All right. Okay. All right, so if you chose number five, that is the throat chakra, the chakra of communication. The throat chakra is blue. And uh, actually, if you have thyroid problems, you may have a, a chakra, a throat chakra problem as well, maybe blocked. Um, and Louise Hay said, if you have a thyroid, her books were always, if you have a thyroid problem, it's because you can't communicate. Uh, you don't express yourself. And, um, I, and just as I mentioned for the heart chakra one, um, your throat chakra is from your armpits until just below your nose, because that's your communication. You talk, there's your throat, and of course you're communicative with your hands, some people more so than others. Uh, just even think of some of the finger singles <laughs> that we give as human beings, right? Peace, for example, but I think you can think of, of one or two. We count with our fingers, so we communicate that way too. Um, you know, somebody says how many, we'll hold up how many fingers, etc., etc. Uh, so right from under your nose until under your armpits is your throat chakra. Um, if this is blocked, like I said, maybe you have a hard time uh, communicating. If you're a writer, maybe you have writer's block. That could be a throat chakra um, issue. The throat chakra is blue is blue so let's see what are what do the cards say to help you release your throat chakra <gasps> drifter this is the third chakra that has gotten this experience life as it comes um this is interesting because this is 14 and we're talking about the fifth chakra um so the number 14 number five could really mean a lot to you and this card is blue uh so this is Experiencing life as it comes rather than um, clamping up or hanging on to words that people have said. Um, you know, I think words are can be nastier than swords. You know that old sticks and stones might break my bones, but, we're, but names will never hurt me. I disagree with that a lot. Uh, there's a lot of people who were called horrific names uh, growing up as children. And uh, you know what? They don't remember their broken bones and their scrapes and their bruises and their bumps and their fights. But they remember some of the things that kids cruelly said to them. Um, so this is experience life as it comes. I wonder if this is to be more flexible in your communication and not biting at everything that everybody says. 
um, and experiencing life as it comes rather than reacting to life as it comes. And we react through communication, right? Um, somebody says something to us and we bark right back at them, um, you know, rather than just experience going, huh, I wonder why they said that. Uh, does that have any v validity? And I'm thinking of Brené Brown right now. And uh, she she um, uh, always tells you to think about that. Is that is that really true? So that would be experiencing life. So if somebody says something horrible to you, like uh, um, that color looks terrible on you, rather than barking back and saying, you know, mind your own business or, you know, go to hell or oh, why did you say that and getting all upset about it? Ask yourself, is this really true? Oh, geez, I guess mustard yellow doesn't really look good on me. Um, so that's experiencing life as it comes, and that's in communication with words that are spoken to you. Now, sometimes you can say, is that really true? Well, no, actually, I get a lot of compliments when I wear this. I wonder what's going on in their world rather than taking that on and, and really feeling bad about what somebody said something to you. A deep breath. Listen, this is the second one that's got this deep breath one as well. I'm wondering if you chose number five, if you also need to go look at number four, the heart chakra. Heart chakra got this, a deep breath. And what was I just talking about? You know, experiencing life as it comes. And so when people say something to you, instead of being reactive, Take a deep breath before you respond. And that's in real life and on, on online, right? Um, you know, is this true? Do Is this something that I want attached to my name? Um, what, what will trolling this person actually accomplish? Um, uh, just, you know, maybe we need, maybe we all need to take a big deep breath when people, when people say something to us that we're disagreed with, like, Oh, if you don't vote for Trump, the economy is going to crash. Take a deep breath. And, you know, is this worth responding for? Is this worth ruining a friendship over? Is this worth, you know, your time trolling on the Internet? Um, you know, I, I often think about um, ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> Put your fork down and walk away. Um, <laughs> right? Just... Whatever you're doing right now, in other words, put your fork down. So whether you're eating, whether you're writing, whether you're whatever you're doing, just just put your fork down and walk away. Whatever you're doing, just just walk away. And uh, nine times out of ten, that's the best advice ever, especially when it comes before you say something reactive. That's the last one. Shamanic healer, cleansing, attunement. Okay, so throat chakra. Um. You know, with your communications, you may need to, um, a cleansing and attunement, you may need some counseling to get some things out um, that you would, right? So let's say you're you're not uh, communicating, your throat chakra is blocked, you get that lump in your throat all the time, uh, you can't speak your truth, um, maybe you've got a lot of things bottled up. I mean, who knows? Maybe you're up to number five and go, yeah, that's all. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. Um, it's probably not. There's probably one that is really um, uh, uh, blocked. And as soon as you unblock it, the rest will fall into place. But if you are especially, especially if you did number four and now you're at number five and, you, and your well is empty and you're feeling alone and you're feeling lonely, I think this would be a need to, uh, to communicate with a healer. It doesn't be a shamanic healer, um, a counselor, a therapist, a life coach, a, um, a tarot card reader, for example. Um, you know, maybe you, maybe you need to find somebody who um, you can really let everything out. But knowing that they are protecting you, that your words will never go anywhere. Their mouth is closed. So you actually get the energy out of your chakra. It's out of your uh, throat, out of your voice. You get it out, you release it, but knowing that it's safe, that it won't go anywhere. And a lot of times people have things they can't talk to their best friend about. They can't talk to a sibling about. They can't talk to their spouse about. Um, 
And some of us have some deep, dark secrets that are, that are way deep below, way deep below. And what we need to do is find somebody to release those secrets to that somebody that we know who's a professional, please go to a professional that will keep your secrets. Um, and also with the attunement here, maybe give you some ideas, uh, uh, of things to do because you just don't say it once. Well, and then it's done. It's not throwing up. It's not like you're throwing up. Oh, there's all the food. Okay, now I'm done. I made a road pizza. This is, um, you say it once and you've only let the lid off. And then you say it again. And then it starts, then it starts flowing out. So this isn't a one-off. This is cleansing and attunement with somebody you can trust who will not repeat what, what you're saying. Um, you know, a, a seasoned pro a season pro. So take a deep breath. Everything's going to be okay. Go find somebody to talk to and get that out and get the, get that energy out. If you look at, look at all the energy that's coming out of this, out of this. Could be a shamanic healer if you want. I mean, why not? Um, I, you know, if you're looking for a good shamanic healer, Northy, uh, um, one of my colleagues here on, on YouTube, uh, she does shamanic healing. Um, if you need a referral, I'd be glad to to give you her information. Um, or a life coach, a, a counselor, um, just somebody that you need to communicate that with. Now, other things you can do for your, if you're like, no, I, I'm, I'm good that way. Um, other things you can do for your throat chakra, like perhaps you're having difficulty swallowing. Uh, maybe you just simply have a sore throat. Um, I, I use, you know, so other things you can do are lozenges, um, any kind of like, uh, you know, just candy lozenges, uh, drink plenty of fluids, keep that area nice and, um, moist, um, blue foods, of course, blueberries, dark grapes, for example, um, what are some other blue foods? Um, you know, it's blue is uh, liver. If you're inclined to eat liver, that's a blue food, considered a blue food, blue or purple. Um, uh, what else? Plums. Plums are, are blue. Uh, any kind of blue drink, you know, even if it's uh, fake blue, like a blue Kool-Aid or blue, but it's blue, blue Gatorade, something like that. That's blue. Of course, wearing blue. Wearing blue, wearing blue, wearing blue, staring at the blue sky, not directly at the sun, of course, staring at the blue sky, going sit by a blue water and be careful. It's not green or murky water it has to be like the crystal blue water. So if you're lucky enough to live, um, you know, near a beautiful lake, that's blue, like uh, Lake Louise or one of those that we have here in Canada, Lake Moraine, um, or, you know, if you're in the Caribbean and they have beautiful blue, blue colors, any, any shade of blue is, it will do. Um, or, you know, if you, if you have a blue room in your house, uh, anything that's blue, eat off a blue plate, if you have a blue plate, but anything that's blue that will kind of open up and, and, and strengthen that blue, that blue chakra. Um, if you have a blue choker, for example, or a blue scarf, put it around around your throat. Um, that will that will also also work. Blue nail polish, because remember I said your hands and your arms are your 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 throat chakra. So blue nail polish, blue rings, blue gloves, I guess, blue bracelets, um, anything like that would strengthen that that blue that blue chakra, but mostly I'd like you to go talk to somebody and start to, and like I said, it's going to take more than one. It might even take seven appointments to really get it all out, to spit it all out until the point that um, it's all gone, or there's so much, there's so little left that you can easily, easily deal with it. All right. All right. So that was chakra number five, chakra number five. So now, if you chose a chakra number six, this is your third eye. And uh, your third eye goes from the bottom of your nose until the top of your head. Your crown chakra act actually sits on top of your head like a crown. It's not really in your body. It's on your body. It's somewhat like your uh, root chakra. 
from your, you know, inside of your ankles to the, to the ground, but it's not in your body as much as the other, um, uh, chakras are, but I digress. We're at number six and we're talking about your third eye chakra. Now this color is indigo and a lot of people are confused. What color is indigo and indigo is, I want you to think of, of a Navy of like, but a what has this tinge of purple to it because blue jeans used to be called indigo. Uh, and it's a, uh, really dark, almost, I don't know if you can see, this is like a purpley, no, not really, um, a purpley blue color, indigo. Indigo ink is, is like a navy, um, yeah, I'm I, I, I navy. I guess if, at the end of the day, if I had to say what color is it most like, I would say like a light navy color, uh, but it has purple in it. It, does, it definitely has some purple in it. Um, yeah, indigo. I wonder why they picked indigo. <laughs> I guess all colors of the rainbow. So if your third eye is blocked, you may be um, you may be experiencing headaches. Um, you might not be. You might have trust issues with people, either over trusting or under trusting. Um, your intuition may be off. Now, your third eye is your second intuition brain. Your first intuition brain is your solar plexus. And uh, this is your um, uh, second brain. Your, in, your intuition brain is in your third eye. Um, a lot of people, they're really excited to open their third eye. If you be so careful, you don't over open it. Like that saying goes, have an open mind, but not so open that your brains fall out. Same thing with your third eye. Uh, there's a very fine line be have, between having your third eye open and, and having some psychic abilities and having it too far open. And um, now you've kind of crossed a line and a little bit of difficulty to come back. And I... I, my, I've done meditation on it and I think that's where like our schizophrenia, our psychosis and whatnot come from is that that third eye is just way, way too open and is experiencing, um, things that, that we weren't meant to see. All right. So if you chose number six, your third eye, what remedies are we looking for here? perfect storm the courage to step into life and that looks like opening up your third eye oh i love that card i love that card perfect storm now the raven well the raven is is a very mystical creature so this is the perfect storm the courage to step into life the courage to open that third eye the courage to see what others can't see but again, in a, in a way that's using wisdom and not in a way that is way over the line in that you actually lose reality because you can. So it's a perfect storm. It's the perfect amount of opening that third eye um, and, and the courage to step into life, the courage to step into who you really are. Um, you know, interesting, this raven, if you look, there's peacock feathers you see that? Can you see all the peacock feathers on this card? On the raven with peacock feathers. Um, so, you know, is this a raven or is this, or is this a peacock? Um, so the courage to step into who you are, and that's what your third eye is going to tell you. Your intuition is going to tell you, you're not a teacher, you're a plumber, or you're not a plumber, you're an artist. And when you open up that third eye, then then you can see those truths of, of who you really are because you're listening to your intuition. So when your intuition says, you know, you should be a plumber, you should be a plumber. <laughs> I don't know if it'd say that, but you know what I mean? You should be an artist. You should be a singer. And it's whispering those things and you're ignoring, you're keeping that, that third eye closed. You're keeping that chakra closed. Uh, the perfect storm actually will then happen. Maybe you'll lose your job. Maybe you'll lose your, uh, maybe you'll get injured on the job and you can't work anymore. And so then you have no choice but to choose something else. So that's sometimes what the perfect storm is. I love this card with the peacock feathers. 
Um, I, also with your, with when your third eye is closed, um, like I said, you could get headaches, um, uh, dizziness, you can feel dizzy. Um, sometimes, you know, what it takes to open your third eye is to breathe deeply and do your ohm. And just think, that's why it's from the bottom of your nose to the top of your head. When you do an ohm, it's, it doesn't vibrate in your mouth. If you're doing it properly, it vibrates from the roof of your mouth to the top of your head. You can try it right now. Try, um, when you do it properly, do a deep breath and then do the ohm or just hum and, and feel in your body where it vibrates. Feel in your body. It doesn't vibrate in your tongue or the bottom of your, your jaw or anywhere else. It vibrates on the roof of your mouth and up to the top of your of your brain. Um, and that that uh, that's why that's your 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 third eye, even though your third eye is uh, they usually draw it on, on your forehead. Um, sometimes if your third your your chakra is unbalanced, it's because your third eye is way too open. Um, and that's what I call unicorn eye. And then you become kind of fanciful and a little bit dreamy and your feet aren't on the ground and um, you can become manic in some regards. Into me I see. Look at that. Look at that star and the third eye. Into me I see. Look at there's all the chakras and there's the third eye. Can you see that? The star on the third eye? Oh my God. The courage to step into life, into me I see, to be who you want to be. Maybe, maybe you look like a raven, but you want to be a peacock. Now, it doesn't mean you go out and change, you know, go to the doctor and change everything, become a peacock. Maybe right now you, you know, you dress in very plain clothes, but you love style. You wish you were more stylish. Then go and do it. Courage to step into life the way you want. Look at third eye. Look at one eye right there. One eye. And also think of the third three eye raven from Game of Thrones. Look at that. Into me I see. So you're having difficulty of... Um, expressing who you want to be, who you really are, who you really are. And who knows, maybe it is your gender. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you just want to, maybe, you, you know, you're in a high corporate job and you just want to be a stay at home mom. Um, maybe you're a stay at home mom and you want that high corporate job, that career. You know what? Go do it. And look at this four, four and eight. Four and four make eight. So this is a double message for you. If you chose number number six, you're very powerful and you don't realize it because you're keeping it closed. You're keeping that chakra closed for a reason. Maybe, 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 you know, trying to be a stay-at-home mom would be too much work. You'd have to downsize your home and downsize your life. And um, <laughs> the courage to step into life. You're making, you're making excuses. And what makes those excuses? What's going on in your brain? But yeah, I was saying that sometimes your, your chakra can be too open and then it's still, that's unbalanced as well. And, uh, maybe you're too flighty, you're too dreamy. Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to like, let's say you think, oh, I'm going to, you know, open a shop on Etsy and be a millionaire by the end of the year. I mean, you could, anything's possible. Um, but is that, is that true? Maybe you could make a hundred thousand this year and 200,000 next year and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The healing heart, love, acceptance, romance. What a, <laughs> like, look at, we go from indigo, look at all the indigo colors in here to boom, the healing heart. Um, Something to do now, if you haven't looked at number four, I would suggest you go look back at number four. Um, there's something here, love, acceptance, romance. I think this is with yourself, to love yourself, to love yourself enough. And then look at, actually, now I see the connection. Kapow, right in the heart. Here's the third eye. Here's right in the heart, right in the heart. 
right in the heart. The heart, the third eye. Are, for you, there's a connection here. Um, maybe your, your heart blockage is blocking your third eye or vice versa. But this is telling me you need to heal your heart to open up your third eye. You, so maybe you don't know what your purpose is or what you want to be. It's because your heart is blocked. Um, there's a direct, there's absolutely a direct connection here. Heart, third eye, heart. Yeah. So that's what, that's what the issue. Go back and watch number four, the heart chakra. Do those, I would do those first. I would absolutely do those first. I normally don't say that because you chose number six, but number six is, is directing you to number four. Um, this is a heart of gold as well and to be generous with yourself um love acceptance romance with yourself except that you know if you're a stay-at-home mom and you want to have that career that corporate job just love yourself and accept yourself for that don't beat yourself up and think oh i've got to stay home and raise these kids no just accept yourself the courage to step into life starts with the heart Courage, the word courage is a French, starts with the French word, the Latin word for heart. Cur, C-O-U-R, is heart, love. Cur, the courage, the heart, to love yourself, to step into the life that you want. If you're that corporate mom and you just want to be a stay-at-home mom, the courage to take, do what it takes to downsize that house, to, um, you know, whatever you need to do. Maybe, maybe you need to start an online business so you can, you can stay at home and, and maintain your lifestyle, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Don't beat yourself up for it at all. Don't think, oh, if I'm a stay at home mom, we don't have the extra money. I can't take the kids to Disneyland, blah, blah, blah. No, you're guilting yourself, guilting, guilt, gold. The courage to step into your life. Love, acceptance, romance with yourself. Wow, what a powerful message. I've actually got a headache talking about this. So I'm wondering if I have a number six block, third eye right now. Very interesting. Like, yeah, sometimes though I pick up the physical symptoms. So other ways that you can... Um, uh, balance your your sixth chakra or indigo is actually wearing indigo jeans that's the dark jeans not the faded find yourself the original indigo jeans and and throw a pair on um <laughs> i'm not kidding you wear a dark color indigo hat or if you have um a pair of sunglasses that are the, like a dark navy sunglasses um uh, a, a dark scarf, right? An indigo scarf, indigo color. If you don't know what color indigo actually is, just Google indigo and you'll get uh, some color swatches that, that you can do. Wearing any kind of color indigo shirt as well, you know, but the indigo jeans are 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 the best because uh, they also ground you while you're opening up your third eye, right? You don't want to just live completely in your head and open your third eye and not have that grounding um, uh, cause you could float away. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but you know what I mean? You want to balance it. So that's why I like telling people to wear indigo jeans and while they're opening their third eye. Um, and if you're a lady and you like really, you know, dark blue eyeshadow, uh, that will help open it up a little bit. Um, uh, do some meditation, some mantras, do the ohm. Nice deep breath with the OM and, and really, really get that vibration going with the M. And if you feel silly doing that, just hum. Hum any of your favorite songs and, and feel it vibrate um, in the nasal, nasal cavity and, and up. Uh, that will help open up your eye. And if your eye is too open and you're seeing um, things that you shouldn't see or um, you're hearing voices or whatnot, uh, number one, check with your doctor. Um, number two, these remedies will also help with that. But I find that the upper chakras, 
not a lot of food really helps with it because it because the lower chakras the the heart and lower are the body of the body um so when you get into the upper uh chakras not a lot of food really helps it's it's more um you know the colors that you see and the things that you do um that that help and the th thoughts that you think help more with that all right as uh, some journaling also will help here uh, get those thoughts from your from your third eye out your hand and writing on paper. Um, don't type it, write it. That that's that's the best way to get your thoughts out of your head and uh, get them into reality. All right, all right. So that's number six. That's number six. Let's get to our final and number seven. All right, so if the number seven jumped out at you when I said pick a number between one and seven, you are in the right place. And number seven is the crown chakra. Now, the crown chakra is normally uh, said it's a violet chakra. Um, my studies have shown it's actually more of a gold with, with a bit of violet flame on it. It actually looks like a crown. Uh, think of a flame from a gas stove but in gold with just a little bit of violet on the top. The violet flame chakra, the true violet chakra, is two more chakras up. You have your white chakra that is above your, your, your crown chakra, and then you have your violet frame, frame, flame chakra. And uh, that's where, that's a very sacred, sacred place. Um, and... Um, but we're talking about the crown chakra here. If your crown chakra is is unbalanced, um, there could be things like um, you get in trouble with with authority. Uh, maybe you're, all of a sudden you find you're getting parking tickets and speeding tickets, and or um, you ask to return something and the manager says no. Um, and there's a reason for <laughs> for this is because you aren't wearing the crown. They don't see you as an authority. They feel, and especially if their crown chakra is really balanced and strong. Um, I, I find that people who wear a lot of uniforms, they don't have any problems with their crown chakra. They're really, they're very sure of their authority. Um, so when your crown chakra is unbalanced, um, you're not going to feel like you have authority. And it'll be very easy for people to override what you want to do. So if let's say, for example, um, you want to go out for chicken wings and everybody else wants to go out for hamburgers and you're like, oh, come on, we haven't been out for chicken wings in a long time. Oh, no, the clock's going to ring. Um, they're going to override you. So those are things that when you're crown chakra. Also, you're going to feel kind of disconnected from society in general versus the heart chakra. You feel disconnected from your intimate relations, your friends and your family and uh, maybe co-workers, but your crown chakra, you're going to feel disconnected from society in general. Um, um, it could be headaches, but like I said, the crown chakra rests on top of your head. Uh, if you have a hair problem, uh, you may have a crown chakra uh, problem. And I'm, not, I'm not talking about general genetic, you know, hair loss or whatever, but if, if all of a sudden you find you're, um, you know, maybe you have dandruff or, or all of a sudden you, you've got a great kind of hair loss. Um, I know a lot of people after um, the current thing that happened two years ago, uh, there was, a, if you were, if you tested positive, a, a lot of people lost, lost hair. Um, it all came back, but at the time they lost hair. And it's interesting because that virus was C O R N A, which is crown. Yeah, think about that. Uh, and disconnected from society. Everybody was told to stay at home. C O R N E, look it up, it means crown. So I just thought that was an interesting choice of words for them to choose, and then look what they did to us. So you may have chosen number seven because of what all of society went through. Maybe it, it hasn't balanced out for you. So let's ask the cards. Fifth, 
Feast of Plenty, Choices and Their Consequences. Ho, 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 ho. Look at that. Feast of Plenty, Choices and Their Consequences. So uh, do you feel like, interesting, there's a B here. Uh, a B, I, that's a, a story for another day. Um, that's our crown chakra is our choices. That's our karma. Uh, that choices and their consequences, feast of plenty. So our, um, I've got to read the next card. I'm not quite connecting with this. Um, what is this meaning? Why is this meaning with the crown chakra? What is this meaning with the crown chakra? Choices and their consequences. Um, it could be it could be that maybe you have chosen to maintain a distance from society. It's like you have you, now you don't need to, but you still are choosing that, um, right? Uh, let me see. I need help with this. I need help. This is interesting. It's the first card I've been stumped on. I wonder. Let's see what's this next card going to say. Roots of Abundance. Feast of Plenty, Roots of Abundance, green on the bottom, and then these Roots of Abundance. And we have a 20 and a 2. So yes, this is connected somehow. Um, I'm wondering if, if you have a number 7, a crown chakra that is, is, is still blocked, is because you're thinking lack, you're thinking scarce, scarcity, you're thinking um, uh, the the world is a dangerous place, and that you have to stay close to home, um, and and just I'm just getting scarcity, just really blocked somehow, like just really really blocked, like to have your crown chakra and roots show up. When your crown chakra, that's telling me that like your whole silver cord, maybe if your crown chakra is still blocked, um, maybe it's it's your root chakra that you really need to need to look at. What choices are you making where you're living, where you're where you're staying? I'm just trying to look and see. Interesting, there's a bee here, and I'm seeing um, uh, butterflies, dragonflies, little other uh, fireflies, little other insects on here. Feast of plenty and roots of abundance. Why did you pick number seven? What's blocked for number seven? Connections, partnerships, contract, commitment. There we go. There it is. Look at, we've got green, green, green here. So if your crown chakra is blocked, you need to look at your body, mind, and soul. You need to look at your, this would be, this would be your body. This would be your mind. And this would be your soul. So you need to look at your body, mind, and soul. That's why I couldn't connect because I needed all three of them together. Your, your roots is your bottom, your bottom, your body. And of course, your connections is your green chakra, your heart chakra, which is your partnerships, your contract, your commitment. That's your heart chakra. That's your soul. And then your mind, feast of plenty, choices and their consequences. Will you make choices in your mind? So if your crown chakra is unbalanced, if you put, if you pick number seven, you need to balance your body, mind, and soul. It means that you are still um, wrapped up in being disconnected from society in general. And this just isn't one person. This is connections, connections, partnerships, contract, commitment, and this is this is a, this is many. This isn't just one. It's not just one emerald. This is many. This is many heart connections. Um, and it's partnership contract commitment. It's not, like I said, it's, it's, it's society in general. It's not your one-on-one -on -one love connections, right? 
um, you know, this is your, your work connections, your business connections, your, your, so your neighbors, et cetera, et cetera. Um, your root. So this is your root chakra and then feast of plenty choices and their consequences. So if you pick number seven, um, you need to do a complete chakra, body, mind, and soul balancing. Your crown chakra is off and it's tilted everything else. Um, so I would just do um, body, mind, and soul. So your mind is your indigo. Uh, your body is your root. And then your soul is your heart. So that would be uh, number one. I would even maybe do number two. One and two. Uh, cause it, well, it says roots right here, but your, your body, your connection is, it actually really connects in your, in your second chakra. Um, your mind is your, um, your indigo, your number six. And of course your partnership is, uh, your number four, your heart chakra. Um, you may want to do, to do all of them. Now, what the color I'm seeing the most here is greens and blues, so there you are with your greens. I don't think I mentioned with the heart chakra, the greens, the food to eat. Um, the greens, that would be your salad, your vegetables, um, you know, do some juicing, um, especially leafy greens, especially leafy greens. Don't eat green meat. <laughs> um, and, and maybe a scattering of blues, like, you know, maybe some blueberries or something, but uh, green grapes, green grapes with uh, maybe the dark, blue grapes that you can get blueberries but I would really go in with the green foods I'd be wearing a lot of greens and blues um a little bit of pink because pink can be the heart chakra as well but that's more with your one-on-one -on -one connections with your loved ones and your family I want you to connect with society as a whole um I think you still have a bit of a hangover about maybe look at the two uh um poking here um, whether you did or not, there may be some scars with that, that you have regrets, uh, whether you did or not. Um, I would, I would go back and look at that. I think if your crown chakra is blocked, if you pick number seven, you still have a, a, a something to clean up there. Uh, whether it's regrets, whether it's, um, uh, maybe, maybe you have long COV ID, um, Maybe you still have some fears around that, but that's what's blocking your crown chakra right now. Um, that's so interesting. It's amazing that that came up because um, that's being afraid and lonely in society as general and not being connected um, uh, to, to earth properly, um, not, not, not having uh, confidence in the earth. Um, do some grounding. Definitely. I would get a grounding mat and I would be standing on that grounding mat or having my feet on that grounding mat as, as long as I can minimum half an hour a day. Um, I would start to maybe make some connections. You know, this could even be, maybe you're on social media too much choices and their consequences, feasts of plenty. And, uh, maybe you're on social media too much. And maybe it's, 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 it's blocking you somehow. Now you might have to really pick and choose, right? How many can you hold in your hand? Um, uh, pick and choose because some, something, this feast of plenty choices and their consequences is not doing you any favors. Um, so yeah, for, I would, I would really do a social media diet, really clean it up. I mean, if you want to stay on Facebook, stay on Facebook. Or uh, stay on Twitter, but clean it up. Get rid of a lot of the negative people, the choices and their consequences. It is it is to your detriment. Um, maybe you aren't on social media at all. Maybe you aren't. You're like, no, 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 no. Um, well, maybe pick one that you think is um, would be beneficial to you. Uh, gentle social media and uh, just kind of wade into it. Uh, so for example, uh, maybe you like sunsets. So go on to Instagram and just look at people who post pictures of sunsets. And then that way you don't get fear of missing out. You don't have to, 
you know, really engage with friends and family if you don't want. You can go under an alias name and just become friends with people who like sunsets. That's very benign, right? Or let's say, you're, you know, dogs. Uh, I'm on one. I like chihuahuas. So I'm just that, you know, I keep it. I keep it really, really tight. I don't follow anybody that would possibly brag about things that I can't afford or, you know, um, those kind of things, right? I don't follow any kind of star or celebrity or anything like that. Um, I, I don't, so I don't get any kind of fear of missing out. Um, I, nothing like that. I just keep it really, really tight, really tight. Um, that kind of thing. So that could be a, a, a remedy as well. Um, doing a social media diet, picking and choosing and doing things that, are, that you're just really interested in and, and leaving it at that and, and just really watching yourself. Don't do any DMs, direct messages. Um, maybe just only chat with people that you really enjoy and like. Close it down to the general public so you don't get nasty messages, that kind of thing that kind of thing. But yeah, if you pick number seven, um, I'm not going to say that you, you know, you've got lots of work to do. No, it's generally um, body, mind and soul that you need to evaluate. And uh, you can do it by doing these kind of different things. All right. Wow. Very, per we got some very profound stuff going on today uh, for people. And uh, I sure hope you enjoyed this. And uh, I get a lot of people asking about the chakras. And I hope this was a good, um, uh, I don't want to say lesson, a good video for you and entertaining. And let me know what you think. And let me know what your number was too. And if it applied and if or you're going to apply uh, some of the remedies. Thank you so much for watching. I sure appreciate you. Take good care. See you online. Bye for now.